Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're creating a detailed game ready axe. In this episode I will be sculpting the runes onto the axe head and talking about how you can get intricate details with hard edges. If you like what you see here then check out the description for my website and playlist section of my channel for other free courses. Or you can follow the links to my character course where you can learn to make a full game ready detailed character from scratch. Okay, so we want to start working on the runes for the axe head. So let's select the axe head, go to sculpt mode, and start setting up for that. Now at the moment we're in the grab brush. I think the best tool for this is the clay strips. It helps get a hard edge. So if I resize my brush, let's zoom in a bit further, somewhere around here, and start drawing, we can see what that looks like. So the first problem we come up against is we need more detail in the mesh, so let's undo that. Let's look at our remesh options, we're at 0 0.005 at the moment, so we probably want to go to about 0 0.004. Obviously this is different for your model, and how low you can go will depend on your computing power. So I'll do a remesh there, and you can instantly see the detail that we're left with. Okay, so it's not bad, let's just draw what we might have for some sort of rune on here. And let's zoom out and see what that looks like. And that's not too bad, it's quite deep, so we can go fairly high with our runes. So we can come across to the brush and turn the strength up. Let's zoom back in and see what that's going to look like. So I'm drawing over them, building up the detail, and then I'll zoom out and see how we're looking. I think that's working quite well. I've got my dent quite deep, but I think it's working. Now one thing you can do with this is to change the fall off. So at the moment we've got a very smooth fall off if I click on this drop down here. If we go to something like a constant, then we'll get a much sharper edge, which might be more suitable. What I find with that though, is that it can be just that bit too sharp. So what I like to do is go to custom and bring these right up and just have a gentle fall off right at the end there. So let's see how that's looking. And that's nice and smooth now. And that just gives it that extra bit of smoothness. You can build up quite a lot like this and then just smooth it out. The easiest way is to just smooth it out. I'm trying things like the flatten brush and so forth, but it just ends up being a bit easier with the smooth brush. If anybody does know a better way of doing that, then do let me know in the comments. I'd be very interested to see what people come up with because I haven't found anything that's that helpful when flattening out objects. I find it's just easier to build it up then smooth it out and then pinch the edges once you get there. And later on, I'll talk about the pinching and crease tools. Let's just see how we're looking. I think that's working okay. Now they look a bit blobby and sort of chunky at the moment, but in fact that's okay when you zoom out and that's something you have to think about. What is your axe going to be used for and how close are you going to be? Now you're never going to get too close to these runes I'm assuming, so we can get away with a few inaccuracies and a bit of blobbiness. If you were to get really close then you would need to up the resolution a fair bit and be a bit more precise with your brush strokes. Be careful not to go too close to the edge like I did there and try and keep them relatively flat for now so they are a consistent height. So just going around the place being fairly random with my runes and uh, generally keeping them sort of fairly square-ish. <laughs> the more elaborate you go, the harder it is to pinch the edges. And you can always dig in if you want to erase any sections and then smooth out. It does leave it a bit blobby so try not to do that too much. There are tools like the flatten which you can flatten out some areas, it doesn't work amazingly well. There's probably ways of making it work brilliantly. I found if you turn the normal radius up, it does help. I'm assuming that it's using the normal direction to flatten out. I'm not liking this section much, so I'm gonna smooth it all out. I could increase the strength of the smooth brush. It will eventually make it flat. And if you find it's raised up slightly, you can actually dig into the mesh a bit and then smooth out again and it lowers it all down to that level. It's kind of taking the average between vertices. Okay, so there's some basic rune designs. Now when we come out to about here where they'll be seen, they look reasonably effective. I'll tidy them up a little bit later on, but I'll do a few more areas. I'll show you another tool that you might like, which is the draw sharp. And if we go down to the stroke, we have a stabilized stroke option. Now that means when you draw, you've got this sort of red line that you're dragging along. And that can be a little bit tricky, but it does smooth out your strokes quite well. If you go to the drop down, you can decrease the radius and then that red line will be closer to you. 
and so you're not dragging it along so far. It's easier to increase the strength than it is to go over your lines, of course. So you can get some interesting designs like this. It does take a bit of getting used to that stabilized stroke. Once I make a stroke like this, then I often zoom out to check what that looks like and just undo it if it's not to my liking. And of course, it's worth getting some reference images, even as something as simple as painting on runes, which you'd think would be easy. Get some references to help you along. Okay, so we've got some fairly intricate designs there. The last thing to do then is to tidy up just a touch, go around your edges. I'll turn the stabilized stroke off for this. I've still got the draw sharp on, and you might want to just dig in and smooth out any areas that aren't following a straight line, and then use the reverse draw sharp to sharpen those edges up. And if you have the power in your computer, then you can up the resolution with the remesh. I won't go too high for this, just because I know there's people out there who have less powerful computers that might get frustrated. So I'm kind of showing that you can do it without that. It might look a tiny bit more chunky. As you can see when we're zoomed in here, you can kind of see the faces. But I'm just going around the outlines, making sure they're nice and sharp. And remember to smooth out so it sort of flattens it out. So I find the most useful brushes for this are either the draw sharp in reverse, so holding down control and just going around the outline. You can also use the pinch brush and that helps to sort of pinch the topology together or the edges and vertices together. The crease brush can come in handy using the reverse crease again, so holding down control and then pulling it in together. It's similar to the pinch brush when you do it like that. Just be a bit careful, it is sort of squeezing it together whereas the pinch is pinching it together. It's slightly different, so experiment with those if you want to get those sort of hard edges. I did on occasions try out things like the scrape brush and the flatten brush to see whether I could get those to work and flatten out the shapes to a certain level, but I couldn't really seem to get that to work in the way that I would like. So it did end up being a combination of those brushes, the crease, the draw sharp, the pinch, and obviously smoothing out every now and again. Those brushes become more powerful, of course, if you up the resolution. So if you do have a powerful computer, you can push up the resolution a bit higher and you get slightly more detail. Some people have been asking me about the multi-resolution modifier. For me, it's not quite there yet. I prefer to be able to edit the shape very slightly. And with the multi-resolution modifier, you have to make sure your mesh one is really clean. So all the faces are pretty much the same size and you have to be completely sure on your shape. So if you want to put any cracks in it, for example, it's really difficult with the multi-resolution modifier to do that. There's definitely a time and a place for the multi-resolution modifier and it is a really powerful tool. But at the moment, my workflow seems to suit just using the remesh and then retopologizing at the end. And I'm noticing that the capabilities of the sculpting within Blender is getting better and better in terms of how many polys and how high you can go. So it may be that I'm being a little bit over cautious here with my resolution at times, but I'm also trying to show you how you don't have to go so high poly in order to get a good result, which hopefully we'll see in the end. Okay, so that completes the rune section. And because it's viewed from this sort of distance, I think that's fairly fine in terms of how clean it is. You do have to consider that if we were to be viewing it from even closer in, then we would probably have to remesh that bit higher and be a bit more detailed with what we're working on. But you have to make those judgments depending on one, how fast your computer is, Two, the level of detail that you want to go to. And three, as I've said, how far away from the camera it's going to be. So almost all the base mesh is sculpted apart from the chain links down the bottom, which will be fairly straightforward. And I'll do those at the more detailed stage where we start adding things like scratches, cracks in the metal and so forth. So hopefully this is helpful to you. If you have any suggestions or you know of certain tools that I'm not using that I should be, then do let me know. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.